We respectfully request the Sangha Great Virtues for the sake of this assembly and all living beings. Please turn the wonderful Dharma wheel to teach and guide us how to end birth and death, leave suffering and attain bliss, and quickly realize non-birth. <coughs> Vì thứ pha hội cập nhật thiết chủng sanh Tình chuyến yêu pha hương Giáo đau ngạ mồn Như há liệu sanh thoát tư ly khô là tất chứng vô sanh. Hamid, the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Nam mô sa đan tu su che do ye la hu di san mei san pu tu xie. Nam mô ta ra tha tu ya da ya la de tham yêu tam bồ đà tu. The unsurpassed, profound, subtle, and wonderful Dharma in a hundred thousand million aeons is difficult to encounter. Now that I am able to see and hear, I will receive and maintain it. I vow to fathom the thus come one's true and actual principles. Wu shang sheng sheng wei miao fa ba he jie wan jie nan zao yi wo jin jie wen de shou Chư yuan jie ru lai zhe shi yi. O Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, Great Master Hui Nang, Great Master Shen Hua, all good monks and nuns and all good no advisors, Amitofo. Chu Fo Pu Sa, Jing Liu Zhu. Sư phụ sang rần gơ vệ, trừ trả rần gơ vệ, sang trừ sư mê tổ phó. Chư Phật Bồ Tát, kính thư lục tổ, hòa thượng tiên hóa, quý thầy cô và quý vị thịnh trí thức A Nhi Đà Phật. Hello everyone, today is the 4th of February 2023. We're here in Way Mountain Temple to continue discussing the Six Bay Trak Sutra. We're towards the end of chapter 3 about doubts and questions. Slide 70, let's jump right into it. So, the great master was asked about the Pure Land, the Pure Land Dhamma door, whether it's a real thing, real deal or not. The master previously certified, reiterated it's for real. The Buddha would not lie. And your disciples of the Buddha, you should believe the Buddha's words. Uh, and he says, um, uh, if you, you, he talked about the condition for rebirth, the Western bliss period and so forth. And he says, uh, right now, 70, he says, Huineng, we move the West here in the space of Katsana so that you may see it right before your eyes. Do you wish to see it? Okay, so this is a common issue with the Pure Land Dharma door. It's so far away, no one knows about it, no one has really seen it. And that's why they, we always have this doubt in our mind whether or not it exists. And Master Hui Deng says, yes, it exists, but would you like me? 
uh, to make it appear in front of your eyes to really help you uh, um, get rid of all any, or any doubt you might have. Mm. Uh, and I can do it in one kasana. Would you be interested? Uh, and uh, they probably say no, I guess. Uh, 72, the entire assembly bowed and said, if you could see it here, what need would there be to vow to be reborn there? Please, High Master, be compassionate and make the West appear so that we might see it. Hmm. And so this assembly is kind of weird. He says, if you make it appear here, then we won't even bother bowing to be reborn there. And what's, what's the matter with these Chinese people? I mean, you see it, you know, I, if I could see it, I would be more inclined to go to the West because it's so nice, it would be so nice, so much nicer than anything here, you see? And so these, these, uh, these, these, these two chan, you know, they say, if I can see, it's so easy, so it's no challenge, not challenging anymore for us, you know? We'd rather become a lion. Uh, and so we say, uh, so I don't get it. I don't. Anyone has an idea why they say if I could see, I don't want to go to the Pure Land anymore? Huh? What do you think? Does it make sense to you? <sighs> Maybe as a typo or something, huh? Chinese people, or did you read it right? Or okay. Yeah, anyway, so these, these uh, weird Chinese people said, I can see it, I'm, I'm no longer interested in going to the Pure Land. And, but please, High Master, uh, out of compassion, make the West appear so that we can see it. Huh? Uh, and what do you think he's going to do? Do you think he's going to make it appear in front of their eyes or not? Yeah, we'll be working against Shakmuni Buddha. The Master said, Great Assembly, the worldly person's own physical body is the city, and the eye, ear, nose, tongue, and body are the gates. Outside there are five gates, inside there is a gate of the mind. All right. So the master's reply was, boys and girls, okay, and let's be clear. Your physical body is like a city. Hmm? It's enclosed in itself. And you interact with the outside world through your five sense organs, okay? And those five sense organs bring in the outside information and needs to go through one more internal gate, which is the gate of the mind. Okay? So it has through, goes through, it goes through two layers. Layers of being able to gather information, like a camera right there, being able to capture images, and the mind that actually filters that as well. So two layers of filters two levels of gates, if you will. So far, so good. That's what he says. This is how we are built. Okay? This is how precise the Buddhist uh, technology is. You realize that the five gates are the first, the first access points, and then you still have inside, this to the mind, that also access another access, okay? Mm. Most people don't realize it, okay? And next, 76, the mind is the ground, and one's nature is the king. 
The king dwells on the mine ground. When the nature is present, the king is present. Where, but when the nature is absent, the king is, there is no king. When the nature is present, the body and mind remain. When the nature is absent, the body and mind are destroyed. 心是地，性是王，王居心地上。性在王在，性去王无，性在身心存，性去身心坏。Okay, bless you. Keep warm, ladies and gentlemen. Be careful. Don't get catacol. The temple is very dangerous. It's a lot colder than it seems. It sneaks in and makes you sick. Okay, that's why you. In the temple, it's like you can you relax. Uh uh, uh the we, the cold will sneak up on you and then get you sick. That's why you have to be very very careful. Okay, um, and he says the mind is the ground and one's nature is the king. That's the relationship. Um, the master says your mind is the ground. Okay, and the, and your nature is the king. The king dwells on the ground, meaning that your Buddha nature, okay, resides on your mind. It doesn't stay anywhere else, okay. When the nature is present, the king is present. But when the nature is absent, there is no king. So he says, this nature, your Buddha nature, when it's inactive, present meaning is active inside you. Okay, meaning that you utilizing your nature. Okay, then the king is present, meaning everything is being governed properly. Is that clear? It's not that clear to you, you know, modern day people. But the king refers to the ruler who rules over the empire, rules over the country, and the country needs a ruler. Otherwise, it will be anarchy, like in Spain used to be the case. Yes, sometimes. Uh -huh. uh, all right. Uh, so here we have a ruler. Last ruler is still ruler, but it's real anarchy everywhere. <laughs> so anyway, so it's a concept here is that the king has to be in charge of the ground, of the domain. Okay. Now, so when the nature is absent, meaning that when your Buddha nature is not active within you, okay, then it's anarchy, it's chaos. Sound familiar? Huh? Okay. When the nature is present, the body and mind remain. When the nature is absent, the body and mind are destroyed. Okay. Meaning what? Meaning that when your Buddha nature decides to leave, okay, that's when the body and mind die. Yes, numero cinco. Master, can you explain to us a little bit more when the Buddha? When the nature leaves, when, what occasion is that? It's a, it's a case where it decides that it no longer wants to use this body, this ground. It's like uh, it uh, says, I'm moving west. I'm leaving California. I'm moving east. To Arizona. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't get it. I mean, Arizona, I still can understand, but Texas, South Carolina. <laughs> I mean, why? It's dangerous there, you know, for us, yellow-faced people. Okay, so it's it's a case where the conditions. 
arise such that the nature says, it's time for me to abandon this thing. So that's why it leaves. That's when the body and mind are destroyed. The nature here, okay, we measure it in terms of consciousness. Uh, the consciousness, when our consciousness leaves, that's when we die. Okay, it's funny, we talked about, we talked with uh, our temple doctor, okay, and he talked about, uh, he shared with us how he dies. He has his dharma where he actually dies. Or they also have the dharma, the Taoists have a dharma where they actually live longer. And I think she wanted to learn, but the doctor said, you not Taoist. <laughs> You deserter. You used to be Taoist, but now you're more interested in Buddhism. Okay, so he refused to share with her, I think. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So the Taoists have this means, this method, where they actually can prolong their lives. And the, it's, it's fascinating, the secret they share with us. It's so interesting. Do you guys remember how they prolong their lives? <sighs> fell on deaf ears. You know, these people are so ungrateful. I was so happy. No, we can't share with you. He says, it's his family secret, trade secret. We cannot share with anyone else. We s swore on the Bible. Yes, for what's so funny? From Cordelia, during the Chan Chi, Master said to work smarter and better. We need to drop our bad habit. We learn to recognize our attachment, but how do we recognize our bad habits to drop? Uh, you recognize your bad habits? It's a good question. How do you recognize your bad habits? Huh? Good question. Anyone? Huh? You got five. Maybe when you see your affliction, when, when do you, you get afflicted? When you're afflicted? Very good. Uh -huh. Excellent. Anyone else? How do you see? How do you recognize your bad habits? Excellent. When you're afflicted, then there's a bad habit somewhere. Excellent. Yes, too. Let's say when you're, when you're distracted, too. You what? When you're distracted. You're distracted? When you're distracted, what's, what's taking you away from what you're trying to do? <laughs> it's wrong, but I like the sound of it. <laughs> Anyone else? Huh? They, they, them people are so colorful. They're white, but yet they're so colorful. <laughs> Yeah, Jesus, we are very racist, you know that. You're finding out. <laughs> yes, seven. Normally, others tell us when what are what our bad habits, I think. What did he say? Yeah. Normally, others tell us what are our bad habits. In my case, for, I think. Oh, this guy's good. Yeah, Jesus, he's good. <laughs> Primarily two ways, okay? When you recognize you are afflicted, when you are afflicted, hey, why are you yawning? <laughs> I can't believe it. We work so hard, and then you know. <clears throat> it's always challenging to lecture to such people. Uh, okay, so when we are afflicted, okay, uh, it's a bad habit somewhere. That's why we are afflicted. Okay, uh, that's internal, but also. When we're with others, and others are afflicted, okay, then we know we have some bad habits as well. 
Okay, and this is, this is the advantage uh, of, of, I only taught you so far about uh, all those who afflict you, well, actually, next level that Jesus talked about, I mean, Jesus talked about. Okay, can we call him Jesus? Or <laughs> <laughs> Not only are you racist, but you also are traitors. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, uh, the next level of the great assembly dharma is actually others are afflicted because of us. That's when you recognize you have a bad habit somewhere. You know, cool. Remember, I told, I taught you so far the great assembly dharma. We gather with people, get together with people because we let them afflict us. It's bound to happen. You know, them two girls, you know, you see, when they first came, that one there, you mean, would sit next to uh, Chuck Yeon. <laughs> I mean, they used to sit close together. Now look at all five of them. One, two, three, four, five. They always say, oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's so subtle. It's subliminal. They don't realize that now they had enough of each other. <laughs> Look at her, see, see, got you. Okay, so, so, oh, so next level for you to learn is that when others are afflicted, then you pay attention as well. Hmm? Isn't that cool? It's so fascinating. This is this is why this is why this is why uh, uh, we we keep on uh, expanding our wisdom. Mm. Okay. Mm. Did we answer the question? Whatever the question was. No, we didn't. <laughs> huh? How do we recognize our bad habits? Uh, Okay, very good. Anyone else? Hmm? South Carolina. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Uh, uh, all right. Next, 78. The Buddha is made within the self-nature. Do not seek outside of the body. Outside the body, confused, the self-nature is living being, enlightened, it is a Buddha. Fo xiang xing zhong zuo, mo xiang shen wai qiu, zi xing mi ji shi zhong shen, zi xing jue ji shi fo. Okay, mm. so he says, uh, commentary, he says that the Buddha is made within the self-nature. What does it mean? It means that when you cultivate and you become a Buddha, okay, that's from your nature. It's still inside your nature. It's not outside. Okay? So don't seek outside of the body. Because remember he just said the body is what the... the the, uh, the, the self-nature resides, okay? So he says, don't look outside of yourself. Okay? Mm. It's not, uh, when he says outside the body, actually he refers to outside of yourself. All right? And he says, when you confuse, the self-nature is but a living being. Your self-nature right now in you is a, that of a living being. But when you enlighten, okay, uh, then that self-nature is actually the self-nature of a Buddha. All right, meaning that you're not a Buddha yet. You're still confused. You but a living being. Is it clear? Don't be confused about it. You, we are who we are, okay? 
80. Kindness and compassion are avalokite svara. Joy and renunciation are mahatha, mahasthama prapta. Okay, and he elaborates further, gives us these insights into our self nature. Huh? Uh, our self nature has these four things kindness, compassion, joy, and renunciation. That's the four characteristics of your self nature. Yes, sir. No? Your self nature doesn't want to ask a question? Okay. He uh, says kindness and compassion of your self nature manifests itself as avalukite fara, one yin bodhisattva. So one yin bodhisattva came about, came to our world because of the kindness and compassion in your self nature. Okay? And therefore, in other words, therefore, when we teach you about kindness and compassion, okay, then you are called Mini Wan Yin. You like? Huh? That's right there. You are one Yin yourself with a teeny tiny one Yin. Don't think, hey, I'm one Yin. No, 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 no. You're baby one Yin. It depends, you know, for Sarah, it's like even smaller. <laughs> All right? And what about joy and renunciation? Uh, uh, it's mathama prapta, which is great strength. Quite, so what is kind of, to me, so insightful to see, we all know about Wan Yin, but no one really knows about Great strength, Bodhisattva. Who is he? What does he do? So what does he do? Remember, in the Pure Land, we talk about Pure Land, Dhamma Door, right? We have Amitabha Buddha. Okay? And Wan Yin, who's, who, you know, had this, uh, this vase thing here and, and, uh, and uh, relieve you with suffering and so forth. And what does a uh, great Sang Bodhisattva, he holds his lotus. We don't know what he does. <laughs> now we're finding out he's actually giving joy and renunciation. Quietly. Okay? So what does he do? What does he mean? What does he mean, joy, renunciation? Give her some Starbucks. <laughs> I will give her tea. I haven't even touched my tea yet. And I'm not even sleeping. <sighs> Joy. Yes, sir. W1. Master, you call me Great Week because I... <laughs> I uh, can't renounce the pain. You can't renounce so the pain. Great strength can renounce the pain and find joy, whereas I'm suffering and can't renounce the pain. So I'm weak. So he's the opposite of that. So he's the, the antithesis of great strength. He's like great weakness. <laughs> yes, sir. South Carolina, number two. Thought renunciation was to let go of everything you have? That is all, all possessions? Yes, it's to let go, yes. Renounce? Renounce what? What do you renounce? Yes, five. Our attachment. 
Your attachments, very good. You renounce your attachments, yes. Nah. Uh, renounce ego. Renounce the ego, yes. Huh? Yes, five. Renounce God. Oh, I wasn't <laughs> thinking about that. <laughs> Never, she says. Never. Sister, sist, Never. sister, <laughs> Victorina says, Never. <laughs> Renounce my family. You now she find, oh no. <laughs> Is that deep <laughs> inside of her? <laughs> All the resentment <laughs> is surfacing. Yes, eight. He says, renounce my husband. I don't know. Translation. I'm still waiting for translation. Sangwook, he says, like, yeah, Sangwook said, no, no, I'm not going to translate this. We let go of our gain, profit. We get, uh, renounce our gain, our profits. <laughs> Disgusting. Uh, it's the same as husband. What do you renounce? Hmm? You all are renouncing small things. I'm disappointed. You don't understand it. Okay, Jesus. We should renounce uh, becoming a Buddha. Renounce? Oh, pfft, sacrilegious. No one is Jesus. No wonder. <laughs> Now, better watch this guy carefully. You know, he's up to something. <laughs> yes, uh, 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 yeah. We renounce our thoughts. Renounce our thoughts. Very good. Uh-huh. Okay. Wow, these guys are so advanced. Uh, <laughs> anyone else? Hey, number four, what do you want to renounce? Okay. Don't read that thing. I want to ask, I'm asking you, what are you renouncing? My Starbucks. <laughs> my sleepiness. So insincere. Okay, read that thing. Oh, let's catch her in the most insincere moments. Jane said to renounce life. Renounce life. <laughs> <laughs> this woman has severe depression. <laughs> How about Jewel Kong? Renounce climbing. <laughs> yeah, <I see. laughs> what do you renounce? You guys are so such small thinkers. I want you to think bigger. What do you renounce? Yes, nine. Uh, myself. Yourself, okay. Still pretty small. Anyone else? What do you renounce? Let's think big, guys. Bigger. Huh? Jesus. I'm not going to call him Jesus anymore. <laughs> it encourages him to misbehave. Uh, yes, Jesus. Love. Love. You're getting close. <laughs> yeah? Uh, getting close. Very good. You see, these Christians and Catholics. Uh, yes, anyone else? Yes, Francis, what do you want to renounce? <laughs> I can hear you clearly. My audio job? <laughs> Your audio job. <laughs> okay, anyone else? Ru Shu, what do you want to renounce? Oh, she says, can I just sit here quietly? <laughs> yeah, what do you want to renounce? Uh, 
잘 되고 싶은 욕심을 내려놓고 싶습니다. I want to renounce my greed that things got better. Mm, okay, very good. Yes, four. He young said, renounce desires. Renounce desires. Wow, He young has a lot of work to do. Uh, yes, four. Emily said, renounce my lay life. Renounce my lay life. Oh, uh, police woman, renounce your gun first. <laughs> okay, anyone else? What do you want to renounce Have back there? Master, I uh, uh, mimic Venerable Shenhua, um, renounce the life to do the Buddha work. The life, what? Sha Ming Wei for sure. Sha Ming. Ming. Wei. Wei, Wei for sure. For sure. Hmm. But you're not serious. What's going to happen to the boyfriend you want to enslave? <laughs> <laughs> okay, young man, don't hide behind the, the bench there. What do you want to renounce? <laughs> Just like his mom is sleeping. <laughs> oh, this family is something else. <laughs> okay, what's big? What's the biggest thing for you that you want to renounce? You mean about yourself, besides yourself? <laughs> yeah, you mean only see me, me, and me. <laughs> huh? What else? What is that? What is so big that you want to renounce? Hmm? That's it? Yes, Lyle. Mm. Attachment to life. A what? Attachment to life. life. Ooh, that's depression, honey. <laughs> careful, <laughs> careful. <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> okay? Anyone else? What's so big? Go for us. Go ahead. Uh, renounce to my body and my thoughts. Renounce what? My body and my thoughts. Your body and your coach. Thoughts. Thought. Your goat? No, thoughts, <laughs> like thinking. Oh, thoughts. Yeah. It's thoughts, not thoughts. Thoughts is like goats. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, getting close, getting close. Anyone? Go for us. What is the biggest thing that you should renounce? Yes, eight. To become Buddha, we oh, renounce it. You hang around the wrong people again. Stay away from Jesus. <laughs> Don't eat lunch with him anymore. God. <laughs> it's contagious, this guy. Yeah? <laughs> you wanted to say something? <laughs> You see, when he meditates, he makes funny noises. He listens when during lecture, he does the same thing. So it's like, uh, lecture is like meditation for him. Very sensitive, excellent. And uh, go for us. Amito for we are uh, renounce our scattered thought. Scatteredness, okay? Very good. Anyone else? What's the biggest thing for you to renounce? Yes, five. That we're thinking ourselves is special. 
But you are, honey. It's, it's okay. It's okay. Mwah. <laughs> Anyone else? Huh? Shall I give you the answer? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Losers. <laughs> you give up. Her. Yes, ma'am, in the back. Give her a microphone. One. À, những cái à, mình nóng giận dễ nổi nóng với à, dễ bị người ta đã kích cái à, lòng có hận thù người ta. This lady is very angry. <cười> <cười> bị đã kích à, dễ nổi giận lắm người. <cười> She says the biggest thing for me is to get upset and angry at others. Careful, careful. <laughs> Don't piss her off. <laughs> okay, she's manic, you know that. You can tell right away. <laughs> okay, uh, anyone else? Hey, young man, are you still awake? He's ignoring, he's pretending to ignore us. Yeah. Remove his ear, 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 you know, airports or whatever. <laughs> Anyway, <clears throat> yes, four. The ego said renounce the self. Chengdu no. said uh, renounce attachment to Dharma. Ray J said renounce your thoughts. Lei? Lei who? J. Lei? Lei J. Lei J, okay. <sighs> okay. Okay, let me tell you. Uh, renounce. What you cannot renounce. Name something bigger than that. When I say by big, it's because it's so big to you, so important to you. If you say, I renounce my husband, did someone say renounce a husband? Love? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay, I renounce love. Okay? Uh, but then he falls in love again. So it's, it's not as big as the next love. Or next love, or next love, you see. Yes, DTT. Hello, Master. What do you want to renounce? Uh, my queen, she was saying, renounce the my. He has to think. I said, my queen, she, uh, she was saying, renounce the mind. Renounce the mind. Then you go crazy. Don't be crazy. You renounce your mind, you go crazy. Don't do that. Okay? All right. Is that clear? We agree? Okay. What's the biggest thing for you is what's most important. You cannot renounce right now. That's the biggest thing. And you renounce it. And then the next biggest thing, renounce it as well. And the next big thing, renounce it. Renounce it. That's why it's the biggest thing. All right? So renunciation. That's mastama prata. Great strength, Bodhisattva. That's renunciation. What he does is renounce what he cannot renounce. That's what he teaches living beings. That's called wisdom. That's called strength to be able to renounce what's most important to you. That's to renounce something you cannot live without. That takes strength. Okay? That's why he's called great strength bodhisattva. 
Do you understand now? You become stronger. Huh? You don't become stronger by doing Pilates and exercise. You become stronger by renouncing. Is that clear? All right. What about joy? What is joy? What joy are we talking about? Yes, five. Uh, Master, I wonder whether those two words should be reversed, if it should really, in a way, in my thinking, be renunciation first and then joy, because there must be great joy in being able to renun renounce something that means a lot. The after effect would be great joy. To have to renounce, you have great joy. Mm -hmm. Besides, that's why the order should be the way it is. Oh. Just for you. <laughs> because you cannot let go of joy. <laughs> Did you see the, her problem? Oh, I see it now. Okay. She says, I'm renouncing so that I have great joy. It's a, say what? <laughs> Do you get it? It's so Catholic. Uh, yes, five. I think the true joy is always there. We just need to unco re uncover by renouncing. What joy is there in life? What are you talking about, woman? I mean, lady. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I find life so hard. You know? Lecturing and people fall asleep on you. Or don't even listen to you. They listen to some kind of airpods. Uh, <laughs> yes? What, what joy? What is joy? And why does the Bodhisattva have to come to the world to teach us about joy? Because, yes, five. Come on, come on, quickly. I think because it's in us, in our Buddha nature, the true joy is there. You don't even know what you're talking about, honey. Okay, uh, go for us. Your true joy, how, what do you know about true joy? And go for us. Master, uh, you, you, you said that before, and recently you published that on Facebook too. You, it's on? Okay, yeah. Uh, um, you said that when uh, the Korean TV show interview you, uh, what you learned in Mahayana, you said uh, life is wonderful. So that's the joy, I think. Oh, it's a sales pitch for Koreans. They are so naive. <laughs> I came and I said, hey, life is so beautiful. Don't you think? He said, oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, poor, I certainly don't understand. Poor Koreans. <laughs> uh, and they bought it. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, uh, and maybe bodhisattvas come to show us joy because there's too much suffering in this world. Then why did Buddha teach about suffering? Uh, because you, we can cultivate, so we can end suffering and have joy. You're so frivolous. I can't stand this. Yes, five. Let me try one more time, Master. <laughs> Third so, time. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, with my work, I had a problem. My boss is bipolar, and she's been crazy. No. She's been, she's <laughs> you have a way of hanging around bipolar people, choosing only bipolar people to get close to. So she's been yelling and putting a lot of pressure. Doesn't matter how much I work, she just writes a long email and pretty bad. So it's been like this for a few. You haven't been working for a while, I understand. <laughs> so yesterday, suddenly, I felt like um, I just said in my mind that this not going to be bothered. I'm not going to be bothered by this. I need to focus on my work because she's coming and keep in a way harassing me. 
Mm. So finally, I realized, don't let her bother me. Mm. So I just, the whole thing was about the mixed emotion about her, like a negative feelings. I let it go. And then I became very happy. But I think that happiness, which is very joyful, was already there because I was so ignorant. I didn't see the joy. I didn't see that happiness. Mm, there's some depth in there somewhere, kind of Korean depth. <laughs> mm, very good. Mm, I like this. It's original. It's very original. Finding joy out of people's suffering. Yeah, anyone else? Yes, Lyle. Okay, let me try. <laughs> it's hard to, to top it, yeah. yeah. Uh, if you have that kind of strength that you can let go of the things that you, ne you cannot let go, and then naturally the joy uh, will uh, appear in our mind. No one, you, you both sit in the same row. You all are, <laughs> after you're done, you say, I renounce first and then I have joy later. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph, you don't know how lucky you are not having to listen to all this nonsense. <laughs> Yes, anyone, go for us. Wow, these, they're getting real creative, though. I mean, <laughs> you, it's like a creative dharma. They're creating new dharmas here, new uh, American Buddha dharma. Go for us. Wow, these guys are good. I think the first thing is that we have the strength. If people are suffering, then we help them. If they are happy, then we help them. Thì cái hỷ đó, sau khi đó mình sẽ có cái hỷ là mình hỷ và người khác hỷ. Cái người nhận nó họ cũng vui, mình cũng vui. Hai bên đều hỷ hết, nhưng mà cuối cùng thì phải xả cái đó. The Chinese are so stupid. If I were Chinese, I'd be looking up the Buddhist dictionary. It's a C, C, C. What does it mean? <laughs> But Chinese are so slow and... Look up the Buddhist dictionary. What does C mean? I challenge all the Chinese people, look up your own Chinese dictionary and see if it's there. The definition of xì. Sự bê xì sở. Look, look up the dictionary. What does it mean? Yes, A. Su hi imida. Su hi to other people. Mm -hmm. That's along the line of the old monk, what the old monk just said. Translation. A metaphor, Master, first of all, you should, ha you should have the kindness. Is um, When you see people suffering, you're trying to help release their suffering. That is compassion. And when uh, you help people release the suffering, that later on will give choice upon the recipient and uh, the one, the uh, subjects, meaning you and that person. And two of you become happy. Finally, you will be able to renounce, renunciate that part. Okay, Chinese people, what is she? Huh? Explain. This is uh, the dictionary. Hmm? What happened to Chinese people? They're still sleeping? Only Koreans get up this early? What's, yeah. the, what's the matter with Korean people? You get up at 5 on Sunday morning? Wow, that's dedication. You know, it's about 5, 6 in the morning now, over there on Sunday morning. Isn't it amazing? I'm impressed. They should be enlightened. If they're not enlightened, it's... Uh, Impossible. Uh, yes, go for us. So, 
happy, pleased, be fond of? No, Buddhist dictionary, honey. You're looking at the regular dictionary. You, what's the matter with you? <laughs> it's funny, I have to tell the Chinese where to look. Anyone else? Yeah, give, give it to Lyle. Lyle looked up her dictionary already. She's Korean and she looked up Chinese dictionaries. Uh, but I don't have Buddhist dictionary. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, let me try one more time. So when you have that kind of strength, then you are not um, confused anymore and you won't be scared or... Uh, uh, you cannot bother by anyone, anything, then isn't it the state of joy? It, so it is not something you find or appear. It, the state itself is joy, I think. Wow, Joseph, did you hear that? That's very deep. I don't think you can get it. <laughs> very good. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Uh, JC. Translation. I searched the dictionary. When others leave the suffering, then we got the uh, we got the joy. Mm, mm, very good. Uh huh. Very good. Anyone else? Uh, go for us. Um, so is it like when you experience joy, you are able to renunciate to that joy? Mm, maybe. Okay. Anyone else? Y yes, four. Hang on. Hang on. Chang Chang says, so she to rejoice. Mm, rejoice with others, uh, good things. Yes, five. We rejoice others' happiness. Mm, mm, rejoice all the happiness. Very good. You all are the same now. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else? Shishi, Kungta, and so forth. Yeah, all those things. Yes, anyone else? I want to teach you something else about joy that the Chinese don't teach you. That's why I asked you. About joy in the Vietnamese, according to you, you don't know. That's why I want to teach you. Yes, too. Master, as long as somebody has joy, then there's also someone that's suffering, too, because you have a self. Mm -hmm. uh, that, too. Anyone else? What joy are we talking about? Number f fourth time for five. Is that related like at ease, being free? At ease, free. Okay, not as good as the last answer. Okay, don't, 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 uh, don't try so hard. <laughs> okay, you are go getting, you are regressing. Uh, yes, uh, go for us. <laughs> Phương pháp để mình trừ cái tính xấu của mình là ghen tị. Thấy ai làm cái gì tốt thì mình hỷ với người ta để mình trừ cái tính ghen tị của mình. Uh, translation. A metaphor, master, uh, rejoice or um, joy is a method to eliminate your uh, jealousy, envious of other people. That's what the Buddhists want to teach you. I want to teach you more. I want the Chinese and Indian Buddhists want to teach you. I want to teach you more about joy. Yes, ma'am, number one. Thầy con con thì không có cha tự điển, con không biết. Nhưng mà theo ý con nghĩ cái chữ hỷ là mang đợi những điều may mắn tốt đẹp. Okay, uh, translation. A metaphor master, I did not uh, look up the dictionary. However, in my humble opinion, I, th I think that joy is bringing a species to others. Okay, uh -huh. any Taiwanese input? What's joy? 
Look up your Chinese dictionary. <laughs> Taiwan person. <laughs> yes, go for it. Okay, now the Chinese person is ready. There is a really, really long uh, entry in the Buddhist dictionary. So I, there's like three, there's different ways of categorize it. There are three way, uh, three type of joys. Um, uh, xin xi, heart joy, um, qi xi, uh, qi xi experience or body joy, and gen xi, root joy. There are also nine types of joys. So there's a lot, many different type of joys according to a dictionary. Uh, yeah, I don't yeah. know what yeah. to that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? Okay. Yes, four. Jane says, Xi Wu Liang Xin. Xi Wu Liang Xin. Getting close. Yes. Go for us. Master, maybe uh, practicing joy will make you want to, it will give you like energy to fight for others. For yourself. Fight for freedom. Fight for freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Ukraine. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Mexico? Independence? <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> yes, four. Emily said, be enlightened to obtain joy. Be enlightened to obtain joy. Is it the same M as the police woman? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's consistent. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Hmm. Joy, as uh, the Buddhists like to teach you, is to find joy in others' good things. It's an interesting concept. Hmm? The joy in denunciation and joy here is that when others have good things happen to them, they win the super lotto, they got engaged, they got a job. Is a good thing happen to them? You happy? You happy as well? Okay, so that's a joy that he's teaching. Ma stama prapta is teaching. Okay? Hmm. But the joy, to me, if you take a step further, why do you have to wait until people have good things for you to enjoy it? What if they have bad things? You should have joy too. <laughs> That's a problem with Chinese people. They're so one-sided. They say, hey, good things, I am joyful for you. What about bad things? I, my first reaction is, like, what if bad things happen to them? Can we be joyful? I say, yeah. <laughs> you agree or disagree with me? I know it sounds funny. It sounds kind of uh, cruel, but uh, you agree or not? I mean, why can we only have find joy in good things? Why can we find joy in bad things? The teaching is one-sided. You want to be Chinese or American? I'm teaching you American joy. <laughs> you get my point? It's, it's like so weird that, you know, if we have to, you know, if something happened to you, good thing is, oh, I'm so happy, I'm so happy, it's just like you. But something bad happens to you, <laughs> and life is full of suffering. So we spend more time not being joyful than being joyful. What kind of teaching is that? I disagree. If I were Mas Tamas Prata, <laughs> I would teach you to be joyful, whether it's a bad or good things. You like it? I'm told you, this is American Buddhism. This is not Chinese Buddhism. Yeah. 
He like you mean? Huh? You mean? You mean says I am so depressed. Oh my god. <laughs> and when we see her depressed, what happens to us? We find joy. <laughs> Why should we be depressed? Let her, <laughs> so that we find joy. <clears throat> you see, that's why I teach Sangwok to slap people using the back of the hand, because it gives you more joy. <laughs> But Sangwok doesn't get it. Anyone else would like to comment, disagree? You see, my point here is that if you start with b a h a s t a m a p r a p t a and find joy in others, good things, eventually you have real wisdom. Then you see, wow, I want to be more joyful. That's true wisdom now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's why you find joy in life. It's no longer good or bad, but you find joy in life. To live is life is, as I told the Koreans, wonderful, wonderful. I was teaching the Koreans that joy thing, but they don't get it. I have to explain to you now. You got it? When I told them, like last year or so, they say, "What is the the thing you learn by Maha Mahayana?" I said, "Life is beautiful. Life is wonderful. Because you look everywhere, it's joy everywhere." It's you mean it doesn't get it, you know. The depression is actually joy. Hmm? There's joy in depression. Yes, W, I. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> I think uh, this type of joy is pretty hard to explain. Because uh, I'm sitting here and I'm in a lot of pain, but I I feel joyful. <laughs> it's hard, it's really hard to explain because my whole body hurts and my my mind's hurting and everything hurts, but I still feel joy. It's That's really what I like about Chan. I find Chan so joyful, looking at all of you suffering so much. Yes, go for us. Uh, just some comment that this dictionary does say there's a joy that's um, uh, around the mind is not moving. The joy of the mind is not moving. So I'm wondering if that has something to do with the even when things bad things happen, you still joyful. But uh, I do, I do, I do wonder if Master can elaborate the joy in the depression. <laughs> the 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 depression. That you experience because you feel bad is because someone plants that thought of unhappiness, of of uh, pain in you. It's not you. That's all. It's uh, artificial. Right. Intelligence. But, uh, but what's the joy in that? Yeah. So that's why. Well, that's why I'm teaching you ignore those thoughts. It's that simple. Ignore those thoughts. There's no such a thing as you know that I'm feeling bad. Are you listening? Huh? When the thought says I'm feeling, I don't feel good. I feel bad. Ignore it. Okay. If you ignore it long enough, then you realize that actually you begin to discover that you can be so joyful. Every single moment of your life. Why? Because you choose to bring joy to people's lives. This is what Mahasthamas Prapta does. 
It's not about, you know, the Buddhists would like to explain to it, to you, to us, like uh, you rejoice in others so that you have reduced jealousy. But it's not that. Mahasthama Prapta, I believe, I haven't met him yet. Uh, I believe Mahasthama Prapta is the kind of Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, who would like to help you know about how joyful your life is. That's why he's teaching. He's teaching you that life can be so joyful. We're talking about, what kind of joy we're talking about? The joy could be simply as having some foreign import beers. As simple as that. Okay? Or eating some tortilla chips with salsa. Why is it simple joys like that? It's because of people around you, in my personal experience. The joy comes from others. Instead of worrying by your own, like you mean does, hmm? you bring joy to people's lives. And that rubs off on you. That's what he does. This Mahasattva, he brings joy to people's lives. That's why he always experiences joy. Whereas you, you, are looking for joy in your life. That's why you have many moments of no joy in your life. Whereas if you only bring joy to people's lives, each and every one of them, there's always joy coming your way. <coughs> applause, applause, what happened to applause? <laughs> hmm? Have you thought about it? The Chinese haven't thought about it. That's why they all say, Mahasthama Prapta is teaches joy and so forth. No, no. It's about bringing joy to our lives. That's what he does. That's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Very much like Avalokitesvara, who brings kindness and compassion to our lives. He brings joy to our lives. He brings freedom to our lives. Renunciation is freedom. You free yourself what's the most important thing to you. You cannot let go. You let go. That's called renunciation. It's not just renounce your love. I mean, love is important sometimes, but sometimes it's not. Look at your husband. So renounce him only when you attach him, but when you not attach him, grab onto him. <laughs> Go shopping. <laughs> yes, two. Um, Pastor, I think um, another part of joy is coming to the temple and, and learning Chan, and then it's like a joy from the teacher and then the Chan student to see how I mean, even though I haven't seen anybody win the Super Lotto or anything, it's like you can get rid of the aggravations inside of you and suffering and excess thinking, and then that, that, that's joy. Yeah, no, sitting around and BSing, shooting the breeze with, you know, some, you know, young kid who doesn't know what he's talking about, you know, or W-I. You've grown in weakness. That's why it's no longer one, but numero one. <laughs> okay? See, I find joy in his weakness. <laughs> I'm just teaching you. Yes, weak one? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think... Uh... The uh, I was thinking about that a lot recently. The uh, bring doing selfless things for people, 
And it's just, you know, you don't want to do it because you're selfish. And then you do it and you make someone else happy and, and it feels better than anything you could have done for yourself. Yeah, it's, it's a, the joy that, f that others experience is very joyful. It's, it's, to me, at times better than our own. Because our own is so limited. You know, we only want so much. You know, so we, someone only sour stuff, someone only wants sweet stuff, you know. It's always limited if you enlarge yourself and let experience the joy from everyone and share with them. It's sort of like demonic because you steal the joy from them. You know what I mean? We let we see the joy. Oh, I like that. Hey, let me have some. But we don't not stealing. We just take advantage of it because the joy is like light. Is oh, I'm so happy. And you say, and you recipient, you receive the light of happiness, the energy of happiness naturally. That's the kind of joy the Mahasthamas Prapta teaches, I feel. Hmm? I never met him, I never talked to him, but I'm... Otherwise, I would not be wasting my time teaching you about joy when good things happen only. I disagree with the Chinese teaching. I'm sorry. China. Go forest. Uh, Master, how, what kind of, um, how can you feel joy from seeing, like for example, I was thinking like in the Tenderloin area, there's like hundreds of people just in terrible conditions. How can you feel joy by like driving by there, or, like walking by there and talking to them? How no, you... it's kind of hard to find joy in that, okay? Uh, so that's why instead of looking at them and trying to, to find joy, that's when you bring them a cup of water and then see how their faces light up. Or do an act of kindness and see how their faces light up. That's kind of joy I'm looking for. Do you understand? It's proactive. You don't just sit there and say, have fun. And let me share it with you. No, we do things, we create environments, we do things to bring joy to people's lives. Even when they have joy already, we bring more joy to them. Hmm? You like? Yeah, I was just, I thought that you said that... An I, well, I thought what you maybe meant, but I wasn't too sure, is that an aligned person could just... Did you hear me, Master? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. All right. Mm -hmm. um, an aligned person could see someone in a bad condition and still not, and still feel joy, I guess. Not saying participate with them, just saying, like, that you still... I thought that's what you meant. I, I found that interesting because what, what, there's no joy in that. They're, they're doing really bad. That's part of that as well. Eventually you understand it's also part of that, but it's not something that I can discuss with you. Okay? It's a, the point here is you can find joy everywhere. And don't be restricted. Don't just rest restrict the joy to your own. Don't ask for joy. Don't demand for pleasure. And that's very small. Okay? That's all. Don't focus so much on your own joy like ordinary people. And that's all they want. Right, Joseph? Joseph says, I want to have fun in my life because he's young. Now you're old and mature. You should be better than that. Huh? You should bring joy to people's lives. That's all. And when you do that, you have your own kind of joy constantly. 
Don't be so small minded. Only me, me, me. Hmm? All right? Does it help? That's why the bodhisattvas are here to teach us about these beautiful, beautiful things, beautiful practices. One Yin Bodhisattva says, be kind. What kind of kindness are we talking about? Be kinder. Is it clear? She teaches about, you have to be kinder. Don't say that, Master Yung Hua taught me to be kind already. Then one you says, be kinder. Can you be kinder? Is that clear? This, the Chinese teaching is so, so static. Chinese, Korean, Vietnamese, Japanese, so static. I don't like it. I want it to be American. I want to be kinder. We are American. We are greedy. That, can you be more compassionate? More compassionate. Compassionate third. We have our own vocabulary, okay? <laughs> Be, you know, compassionate her, okay? Joy her. <laughs> and denunciation her. <laughs> I don't know. Okay? Yeah. It's meant to be endless. And somehow the dictionary reduces it to static things. It's wrong. That's not Mahayana. Yes, five. Um, Master, I wanted to share that on the, the last day of the relics exhibit, we had something amazing that happened. Um, in the morning, there was uh, three busloads of uh, Vietnamese um, devotees that came. Yes. It was amazing because uh, we, we, w the whole temple, you know, we had to have meetings, how we were going to handle it, um, you know, a lot of like logistics just to be sure we were all available mm -hmm. and even asking other people, please come and help us and so forth. It was really wonderful mm -hmm. to see all these people, 160 people. Mm -hmm. show up in the morning mm -hmm. and um and then it happened again in the afternoon completely unplanned and yeah. somehow at the three last more minute, bus loads i heard three more bus loads came uh -huh. and it it was just and they're so, very happy too very happy everyone was the second there. ones were even happier than the morning ones how is that possible because you were kinder and your compassionate third Maybe so. It was so amazing. The, the whole day was so beautiful. It really was. Yeah. It was really amazing. Yeah. I wish I were there. <laughs> you have all the joy in the world. Joy in the world. <laughs> okay. You see? Yeah. It's so cool, isn't it, that you volunteer for eight days and for nine days. Okay, that's it. You know, we can coast now. You know, almost closing time, but no. No, no such luck. Uh, and you start complaining. You say, wow, that's, you know, give it our all. That's so cool. Hmm? What did Jesus do? <laughs> Okay, got that? Okay, uh, and this is what I fault the Chinese Buddhist dictionaries and the various Vietnamese and dictionaries that they're static. They don't stress the, the incremental joy and kindness and compassion. See, when I talk, teach you about kindness and compassion, I push you to be kinder and more compassionate. Okay, and same thing here. I'm teaching you about joy renunciation today. Hmm? Hmm? You renounce hmm? the biggest thing that you cannot renounce right now. Then tomorrow renounce a bigger one, and a bigger one, and a bigger one. That's us. Hmm? And joy is don't wait for joy 
bring joy to people's lives. Hmm? Everyone, don't discriminate. Yellow, white, Korean, non-Korean, Japanese. Oh well, you know. All right, bring joy to people's lives. Just give joy. Then you know what joy is like. All right, moving on. Shall we? Continuing, eighty-two. Capable and pure is Shakyamuni, Shakyam, Shakyamuni. And equanimous and direct is Amitabha Buddha. Others and self are Mount Sumeru and greet and desire our ocean water. Nanjing ji shi jia, ping zhi ji mi tuo, ren wo shi shi mi, tan yu shi hai shui. Okay. Okay, let's see what else he's trying to tell us. Capable and pure is our Buddha. Teaching point, capable. That's us. We practice in a dharma of being capable. Is it clear? Meaning that you hone we hone our skills so that we become better and better and more capable. That's our American Mahayana Dharma. Is that clear? We don't stay stagnant. We don't stagnate. We get better and better and better and better. That's us. All right? Peer. What about peer? He's practicing purity. The Buddha here teaches us about purity himself. Okay? Uh, he came, he created his impure world to teach us about purity. All right? Okay, so that's why he teaches monks and nuns, since you're practicing the Dharma of purity, you don't need to shower for two weeks. If you're pure. <clears throat> All right? Mm. Equanimous and direct are <clears throat> Amitabha Buddha. Equanimous. Because Amitabha Buddha does not discriminate whoever you are. He doesn't say, you, I want you the best to come to my Buddha land only, and you, you know, people, Republicans, don't, you know, something like that, or Jesus, don't. <laughs> no discrimination, okay? Absolutely no discrimination. And that's the heart of a Buddha. If you have the best place in the world, unsurpassed by any other Buddha land, you need to be equanimous. That's how you get there, by the way. Because even though it is the unsurpassed, unparalleled, unequal Buddha land, okay? He still feels as the same as any other Buddha land himself. He's equanimous and direct, okay? It's very far away. That's why he has to take the direct route. <laughs> That's all I can think of. What do you think? I know everything? No, I don't, okay? Meaning that when you go to his Buddha land, you have to be more and more direct. This is a tip for you. Right now, you can, you know, you can beat around the bush. You can lie. But when you go to his Buddha land, you want to go to his Buddha land, you have to be direct. 
All right? <clears throat> All this itself, the Mount Sumeru, the eagle is Mount Sumeru. Eagle says, I'm at the center of the universe. I'm the most important thing, bar none. Okay? That's Mount Sumeru. Mount Sumeru is at the center of the world. Okay? Greed and desire are ocean water. Water, okay, is associated with greed and desires. Our earth is more water than land because it's full, we're full of greed and desires. And guess what? They call it climate change. Actually, another word for that is more greed and desire. That's why. Is that clear? Hmm. Next. Afflictions are the waves. Cruelty and harming is an evil dragon. Emptiness, empty falseness is ghosts and spirits. Dust and defilement is fish and turtles. Greed and hatred are hell. And stupidity is animals. Alright. 85, he says, afflictions are waves, they are endless. Once you are afflicted, they come at you like waves. Hmm? Endlessly, like the waves rushing to the shore of Malibu Beach. Nice. I'm, I feel like going to the ocean for some reason okay okay fascinating the waves rushes endlessly huh? isn't it fascinating because our afflictions are endless they come endlessly at us that's a warning that's how we function Afflictions after afflictions after affliction after afflictions. Is it clear? Cruelty and harming is an evil dragon. If you're cruel and you have a harming mind, you basically are an evil dragon. Okay? Dragons are very fierce, very dangerous. All right? Empty falseness is ghosts and spirits. Empty Ghosts and spirits are not real. They don't really have substance like we do. They don't have a body like we do. Okay? Yeah. And falseness. Uh, the plant false thoughts in you. Make you feel bad. Make you feel depressed. Make you feel like you Jesus. Ask him. Hmm? All right? So it goes in spirit. Dust and defilement is fish and turtle. I don't know why dust is fish and defilement is turtle. I happen to like fish, especially sushis. I don't know why we have to call it dust. Okay? Help me out. Come on, this is a time for you to contribute. Why is dust and defilement of fish and turtles? I don't get it. Yes, sir. What's your imagination tell you? Uh, well, um, I, there's always the, uh, the um, thing people say about uh, save the turtles because the turtles eat our trash. What? So, yeah, you never you never saw that the turtles getting stuck in the um, bo bottle bottle uh, in st choking on straws and stuff like that in the ocean. So it's kind of 
interesting he said that the defilement the defilement of all our our trash and litter is getting uh eaten by the fish and the turtles say what <laughs> you never saw that no i never save saw that turtles. documentary it's not a doc it's just, it's, it's a phrase it people use, save the turtles yeah save the turtles thing yeah save the turtles yeah oh, okay Okay, I, I I have to take your word for it. I never watched that uh, thing. Too American for me. You go for it. Uh, Master, I think the fishes uh, are just, there's just the endless amount of them in the ocean, and they reproduce very, very fast. The one fish can have like a million eggs. So maybe that's the analogy of the afflictions. Well, what about sushi? <laughs> what about defilement? Why, why defilement turtles? Besides the fact they are pollution, like some people claim. Hmm? I don't get it. This, it's not clear to me. I cannot make the connection. Yes, for. <laughs> Jane said, fish and turtles are traditionally lumped together in Chinese. Okay, so it's a Chinese thing, of course. Yes, five. Oh. It's, a, it's just a, what an excuse. A Chinese excuse is Chinese. You wouldn't understand. Uh, I think in the previous slide, the uh, greed and desire are ocean water. Yes. Uh, isn't it some sort of metaphor? So, uh, the fish and turtle, the uh, greed and uh, dust and defilement is from the water. They, they live in water, so uh, I assume that it could be some sort of metaphor, so not the, literally the water. And the I'm worried about you. <laughs> you shouldn't be leaving us. <laughs> It's too much. <laughs> okay, anyone else? This is your imagination is like taking a bad turn. <laughs> anyone else? I don't get it. Why dust and defilement? Yeah, maybe it's lots of fish, therefore it does, but I, I, I really respectfully object to this because I happen to like sushi. And beluga, you know, caviar. Anyway, you wouldn't understand. Uh -huh. Greed and hatred are hell, meaning that if you are greedy, you are angry. Hey, lady, are you listening? Look at her. She's thinking, having angry thoughts behind you. <laughs> are hell. Okay? Let go. Because those thoughts of anger will bring you to the hells. You plant the seeds to go to the hells later. Guaranteed. You should take this very seriously. You think it's okay to be angry because you don't realize the consequences of those thoughts of anger will bring you to the hells. Okay? You find out when you get there, and you find out. All right, stupidity is animals. Okay, obviously. Okay. Eighty-six. Good knowing advisors always practice the ten good good practices, and the heavens can be easily reached. Get rid of others and self, and Mount Sumeru topples. Do away with the deviant mind and the ocean waters dry up. Okay, now, 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 87. I'm warning you, don't be greedy. Don't say that because the master says uh, the heavens can be reached by you practicing ten good deeds. No, 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 no. Don't think like that. Okay, he's simply listing out all these things 
in no necessarily in any particular order for any purpose, except he says, do the right things and the good things will happen and the bad things will disappear. Such as, always do the ten good deeds. Don't lie, don't steal, don't kill and so forth. And you will have heavenly blessings. Understand? Okay, don't be greedy. It's not meant for you to say, I will do 10 good deeds because I want to go to the heavens. No, it means that your good deeds of not lying, not killing, not stealing, not whatever, okay, not greedy, not angry, are actually creating blessings, heavenly blessings for you. All right? But if the others and self, the Mount Tumru, uh, Sumeru topples, Meaning that if you have less than ego, what happens? Hanju, what happens when you have less than ego? You have fewer obstructions. Mount Sumeru is one of the biggest obstructions in this world. Try to climb it. It's so high, it's so wide. It's very difficult to climb. More, much more so than uh, the Himalayas. Okay? So, the obstructions, the difficulties arise because of your ego, your ego. So don't ask for, I have no obstruction. Obstruction arise because it helps you look at your ego. As long as you have an ego, you still see obstructions. And you're bothered by obstructions. All right? Is it clear? Do away with the Indian mind and the ocean waters dry up. Hmm? The difficulties of deviancy is that you will ignore the consequences. That is why you always confronted with these impossible tasks. Ocean and the water are endless. Try to swim. I remember someone telling me, when you do survival swimming, what you, what you learn? You learn that if you get thrown into the water in the ocean, don't even bother trying to swim. Drown. Move on. <laughs> and I don't know why they will allow swimming instructors to teach those things but you know there's some wisdom there <laughs> yeah, fascinating it's a swimming survival swimming who he says if you are thrown into the water by yourself don't bother swimming there's no survival I love it. I love this guy. A gal, whoever he, she is. Fascinating. Huh? Oh. Deviant mind. Okay? You think you can get away with it. Okay. Without afflictions, the waves cease. And cruelty and harming, there's no fish or dragons. Okay, so now you understand the connection, then uh, uh, stop afflictions, then the ocean will have no more waves. The wind will stop blowing in the ocean in Golden Gate Park, in Golden Gate Bridge. You know how windy that bridge is? Oh, good Lord, it's so windy. Hmm. It's because the San Franciscans like Chugin Sunim have so many afflictions. I asked him, where is your hometown? He said, San Francisco. I said, ah, you are so afflicted. <laughs> it is so windy. And cruelty and harming is no more fish and dragon. Never. Sushi is a must in life. So there's something we can now live without. So I would live with 
cruelty and harming so that we can eat sushis. Never mind. Okay, you don't find it funny. Okay, okay. Uh, stick to the serious thing here. 90. The Tathagata of the enlightened nature is uh, your own mind ground, emitting a bright, great bright light which outwardly illuminates and purifies the six gates and can break through the six desire heavens. 自心地上,觉性如来,放大光明,外照六门清净,能破六欲诸天. Can you appreciate this patriarch's mind? He sees the connection. When you patriarch, you speak. You cannot speak nonsense like I do. You cannot joke like I do because everyone takes you seriously. You, you buy that? Whatever he says, everyone, oh yeah, they hang on, we hang on to every single word he utters. Unlike me, whatever I say, say oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> In South Carolina, say, hey man, don't overdo it. <laughs> okay? Uh, but he says here, this is the big picture, he says, the Tathagata of the enlightened nature is your own mind ground, meaning that your mind is the Buddha. Be more respectful of yourself. You may be weak, but you have the Tathagata of the enlightened nature in your weak mind. And the great news? Hmm? Hallelujah. Okay? Emitting a great bright light which outwardly illuminates and purifies the six gates. Okay? Here's what happened. He says, he sees that this enlightened nature of yours is purifying the six gate, the eyes and ears, nose and the mind and so forth. Okay? It's doing it constantly. Why aren't you enlightened? Because? Why? Because you drink too many Starbucks. You are defiling yourself quicker than your self-nature can purify you. Is it clear? We have so many evil thoughts, thoughts of anger, thoughts of greed, thoughts of stupidity that's, you know, that make a sitting in full order so painful. Anyone? Anyone having pain? <laughs> Arrest my case, greed, anger, stupidity thoughts. Huh? All right? Mm. I can break through the six desired heavens. And uh, the six is higher, uh, 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 planting in a six of sense organs. Uh, this is kind of cool. It says, you know, okay? Yeah, anyway, yeah, don't be greedy. Okay, we have a little bit of time left. Six is high heavens. There's, you should know this because uh, it's very close. It's our neighbors. Four kings, heaven. Heaven 33, Suyana heaven, Tushita heaven, uh, the uh, heaven of transformation and the heavens of uh, stealing transformation uh, uh, from others. Okay? So the one you want to remember is this one here. That's where the heavenly demons reside. And they are the highest and they're watching over our world. They see everything, they know everything, and they destroy everything. That's a paradox of that heaven. They destroy their own world. And that's a demon for you. Okay? All right, heavenly four kings, 
That's, uh, that's the rules over the ghosts and spirits. They are actually keeping them in check. The troublemakers are actually governed by the four heavenly kings here. Hmm? Each one governs some, you know, limit a, a certain type of ghosts. Okay, heaven thirty-three. They govern the Christians and the Catholics. All right, and the Pope and so forth. Suyana heaven. Suyama heaven is is um, is um, when you you uh, uh, you reach a level which is beyond Mount Sumeru. This is four kings in midway through Mount Sumeru, and 33 is the top of Mount Sumeru. So Yama Heaven is now suspended in, in, the, in space, okay? And they have, because they're beyond the, the reach of the sunlight and moonlight, that's why they now need to have to tell time by opening of the lotus flowers. I think daytime is open, nighttime it closes. Okay? Uh, that's Suyana heaven. Okay? Tushita heaven is the heaven where Maitreya Bodhisattva stays in the inner court. Tushita means contentment. The, the gods there are very content, they're very happy more so than the lower heavens. Okay? And near Mana Rita, Rati, Rita, Rati, okay? Curry, whatever, okay? It's, uh, they transform their own pleasures. When they're bored, um, they're feeling bad, they say, oh, I turn my depression into joy. Isn't that cool? I, I suggest that you depressed people go there to take a look and learn their dharma. Huh? How do you transform depression into joy? Okay? Yes, go for us. Uh, uh, the uh, master old monk mentioned during the relics exhibition that the uh, Shakyamuni Buddha is speaking dharma in the sixth desire heaven to the demons, is, is that right? Uh, why they're still trying to destroy us if the Buddha is there speaking Dharma to them? Who's sitting in the sixth desire heaven? Uh, I think uh, Shakyamuni Buddha is, is speaking Dharma to, to them right now. That, that's what I got from. The yeah, old. yeah, so? So, so that's true. They're they're basically they're they're learning from. Well, the, they learn from as soon as they learn, they destroy it. Uh, okay, so it's still happening now. Uh, yeah, it's still as soon as they finish listening, they destroy it. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I don't know. I'm not heavily uh, a demon, so yeah, that's the wrong person. Okay? God, these Chinese are so argumentative. Yes, five. Oh, when the heavenly demon, when they destroy the six desire heavens, are they... Don't destroy the entire world, not Enti desire. Oh, does that mean also the inner court of Tushita heaven, the pure land? No, they can't. Thank you. Mm. They think they're destroying it, but they only destroy the... the uh, Sub part of it. Okay, and the six desire heaven where the heavenly demons reside, uh, they specialize in stealing joy from us. So they urge us to drink, eh, to smoke cigars and use drugs and enjoy ourselves, and they, they steal that pleasure from us so that they don't get hurt. We get hurt, but they get to enjoy the pleasure that we eat. Isn't it cool? They are so clever. So whatever joy you experience, they can come and steal it from you. That's why they urge you to indulge 
and enjoy yourself so that they can steal from you. Would you like some, uh, some cough thing? And this cough thing here is very, very good. Oops. Crawl. <laughs> okay, so it has a six desire heaven. So our desire realm has six heavens here, and we can, we can access them. Okay? Uh, time is up. Guess what? Next time, we'll pick up from 93. Thank you, everyone. Uh, <laughs> okay, rebirth transference. <laughs>